So you're thinking about moving to Michigan, but you haven't quite decided if Brighton, Michigan or Howell, Michigan is the right fit for you. Well, in today's video, we're going to cover just that. We're going to unpack the pros and cons of both cities, put them head to head and show you guys what each city has to offer and see if we can find any negatives that might be a good help to make some better decisions when moving here to Michigan. So if that interests you guys, stick around because we're getting after it right now. Hey, for me here for the first time, my name is Eric Meldrum. I make videos just like this about all things Michigan. Talk about what it's like to live here, work here, play here, and yes, the sunshine and the snow and everything in between. I'm also a licensed real estate professional and my team and I have helped hundreds of people just like you buy, sell, relocate, and invest here in Michigan and make better decisions when doing so. So if this information is helpful, go ahead and subscribe and tap that bell so you're first to learn about the current market and every time I put out a new video just like this. All right, so in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at both Brighton, Michigan and Howell, Michigan. Both cities are here in Livingston County and they have a lot of commonalities, but there are some major differences that I think are really important to note when picking between Brighton and Howell. And you're gonna to wanna to stick around to the end because these are really important. You know, somebody that's looking to move, you know, here to the area, we get a lot of people from Metro Detroit that are actually migrating west. They're sick of the, the crammed, you know, cities over there, sick of Shores, Warren, Ferndale, Royal Oak, Birmingham, and they want a little bit of space. Maybe they want a lake house or maybe they want, you know, a little bit of acreage. And people are coming to, you know, Howell and Brighton for those particular lifestyles. So if that's what you're looking for, you know, when moving to Livingston County or Brighton or Howell, you know, those are not uncommon things to find here in the county. So I want to highlight some big differences and some commonalities, ultimately giving you guys a little bit more information to go off of than just looking at the stats online. So one of the major questions I want to propose that you ask yourself is what is the reason you're moving to the area? You know, Brighton and Howell have a lot to offer. We're going to get into that in a little bit, but this is really going to help put some things in priority. You know, people move for certain reasons, whether it's a job relocation or pleasure or lifestyle, be close to work, all those things matter. You know, so when you're looking at Brighton or Howell, just ask yourself, what is the reason I'm moving here? Is it to be really close to an office? Is it to be close proximity to some of the major cities, maybe Ann Arbor, Lansing, Detroit, but you want to be a little bit further away, maybe get a little bit more land, you know, all the things that we're going to go into right now, I'm just kind of giving you a glimpse, but like that's a major question to be asking because, you know, there are some major differences in price, location, and just overall amenities of both cities. And these could have a major impact on your lifestyle. So ask yourself that and that will help put some things in priority. All right, so now that we got that big question out of the way and you got your priorities kind of outlined a little bit more clearly, you know, one of the things I wanna look at is the population size. So when you look at Howell, it's gonna be a little bit larger on the population size than about 10,000 residents and Brighton's coming in just around 7,500 residents. Now, these numbers may seem low and they are because Brighton and Howell are not made up of just the actual city limits. They're actually made up of a lot of townships that surround the area. You know, Brighton, for example, has Reno Township, Hamburg Township, Brighton Township, and Genoa Township. And Howell has areas like, you know, Marion Township, which are a big driver in the population. So when these cities were developed, they were planned as cities, but then the townships really expanded and that the infrastructure from the city never reached as far as it could go into the townships. That's why you see other cities in Metro Detroit and other major cities you know, they're on city water, city sewer, and all these municipalities um, expected the growth in those areas. So they, they did it. These areas here, they grew very rapidly. And the only way to do so was to put subdivisions on septic and well, uh, which is very common around here. All right, so seeing that Brighton and Howell are both considered a small town. It's small, it's tiny, it's petite, it's wee. And there's a lot of people here in both cities that would argue we are not a small town anymore. You know, Brighton Howell have grown to a point where maybe we're medium sized, we're not like a large city, um, but you can't really call it a small town. I still love the small town feel that we have here, but yes, um, population is growing. Things are getting a little bit more congested and that's just a reality of it, but there's a lot of great pros that outweigh that little small con that some people like to kind of throw shade on. Um, but in terms of like the feel here, is it suburban? Is it rural? You know, both Brighton and Howell are both suburban and rural. So they have a lot of similarities in that regard. And the suburban aspect comes from a lot of the growth, right? There's a lot of subdivisions. There's a lot of amenities. There's close shopping nearby. Um, you got all of your major grocery stores. You got all your major department stores within about 10 to 15 minutes 
um, you know, from driving both downtown and Howell. So it does have that suburban feel. Now in a rural aspect, you're still close to everything, but there are a ton of properties and a ton of acreage here in Brayton and Howell that you can still go find one, two, three, four, five, 20 acres, and you could be setting yourself up for you know, a nice little property that has privacy, that has maybe a, a fishing pond in it, or maybe a dirt bike track. I've seen some pretty cool properties. And if you want to see some of these cool properties, uh, just ask. I got some awesome pictures, you know, that I can share with you. Just drop a comment down below. I'll be sure to share that. Um, but, you know, these properties do exist here. So in terms of the feel and whether you're going to be close to everything, which is a major question, you know, when, when looking at a new city is like, I want to make sure I'm, I'm close to shopping. My grocery store is within five, 10 minutes. Like these are the major important things. Now, both of these have a suburban and rural feel. So if that's what you're going for, both cities are a great option. So let's take a look at the average age per city. Now, this is really good perspective to understand what type of people live here. And I'm not talking about ethnicities. Like are they old people? Or are they young people? Or we have a lot of families? Do we have a lot of, you know, senior citizens that, you know, are just hanging around because it's a great retirement town? Well, that's great perspective to know if we're moving to each city. So average age in Brighton is around 44 years of age. And the average age in Howell is right around 38. Now to take that a little bit broader and give you a more pers bigger perspective on Livingston County, because like we said, Brighton and Howell are just small cities within a, much, a larger population. There's about 110,000 residents in Livingston County the average age in Livingston County is right around 37. So that gives you perspective of the whole entire population here in Livingston County, and then we can zoom in to Brighton and Howell. Let's take a look at the lifestyle of both Brighton and Howell, give you guys an idea of the overall vibe in each city. Now, both cities are gonna be a little bit slower pace of life. And now what I mean by that is if you've ever been to the South, you know, we go down to Florida every single year and, and I feel like everything just moves at a snail's pace. Like when we go to the grocery store, um, the clerk is just moving things like, a snail it's it's absolutely mind-boggling and like I, I feel like i'm living in a twilight world but it's just because we're so used to having everything so fast everything comes in instant gratification with amazon deliveries and you know food deliveries to the house and it just everything happens within milliseconds you know downtown brighton and downtown howell and the overall city in general it's still in the midwest like things move right don't get me wrong like we're not at a snail's pace like the south is but there is a noticeable difference between Metro Detroit, like going into Ferndale or Birmingham uh, or Troy or any of these cities, you know, where things are just, you know, everybody's on top of each other and everyone's moving so quickly and everyone's got their own agendas and it's like the traffic's crazy. Brighton is just a little bit slower, right? Everyone's a little bit more respectful and I like that vibe, you know, so overall vibe in both cities is, you know, small town feel, you know, quaintness, a lot of uh, friendliness in the community and a lot of support, a lot of local things that are going on. So that right there is number one reason why I think a lot of people like living in Brayton and Howell and they share that, you know, so that's not the big difference between Brayton and Howell that is very shared in terms of the, the lifestyle in both cities. All right, so let's take a look at the downtown areas to see which one might be a little bit more vibrant, you know, Howell or Brighton. Now, both cities are very similar in the fact that they do have a lot of local restaurants, a lot of local gift shops, clothing stores, coffee shops, you know, pretty much anything you would need. Oh, don't forget ice cream in both of them. They do have a, a number of ice cream stores, downtown Howell and downtown Brighton. If you watch any of my videos, you know I love ice cream. So just send ice cream down to the comments or send it to my house. I'll eat it all. They both have them in Howell and Brighton. So with that being said, you know, when it comes to events, I think Brighton definitely has Howell beat. There's a lot more events that happen, you know, downtown Brighton, that Howell um, farmer's market is in both of them. You got them on Saturday and Sunday. Um, you know, each city does have their own farmer's market. You got Brighton on Saturday and Howell on Sunday. Um, both have a really great turnout, you know, from a farmer's market perspective. You know, I like Brighton. I like Howell a lot. Um, Brighton's closer for us. So we obviously go to that one. But in terms of just overall, you know, walkability downtown and things to do, I would say Brighton takes the cake because there is the Imagination Station, which is the ultimate playground for kids. If you're downtown, that's like a tot lot playground. Uh, we run around, we let the kids go. You know, Mila and Chloe love going on the swing, the tire swing. And if it's not open, uh, you better believe Mila is standing there waiting, waiting for somebody to get off the tire swing so we can go on it. Um, but, you know, Howell does have you know, some of those type of things nearby, it's just not on the grandiose scale 
as Brighton. You know, for that alone, I think Brighton has a little bit of a leg up on the downtown area just because of the Imagination Station and the Mill Pond, which is so great. But when it comes to proximity to everything, you know, Brighton and Howell are very close to one another. It's about 15 minutes from downtown Brighton to downtown Howell. So if you are looking to commute or you'd be traveling to work, you know, that's really important to know like what major cities are around. So, you know, Brighton is going to be a little bit closer to Ann Arbor in Detroit. Howell is going to be a little bit closer to Lansing. So if you are living in Brighton, it's going to be about 25 minute commute to Ann Arbor, about a 45 minute commute to uh, Detroit and about an hour commute to Lansing. Now, if you're in Howell, you're a little bit closer to Lansing. You got about a 35 minute commute to Lansing, about a 35 minute commute to Ann Arbor and about an hour commute to Detroit. All right, so next let's talk about the cost of living in both cities. Now, this is where things start to separate a little bit. Now, when it comes to cost of living, there's one major category that stands out amongst everything else. But in terms of what you're gonna be paying for groceries, you know, gas, all of your utilities, um, you know, everyday life, relatively the same across the board for both Brighton and Howell. All right, so the category we're gonna start seeing some major separation is in the cost of real estate for both of these cities. Now, Howell and Brighton have a lot of similarities, a lot of, you know, homes that are in the downtown area that are old historic homes. Um, you can even find a lot of Victorian style homes in the Howell area, Brighton, not so much, um, but you're gonna find a lot of new builds, a lot of uh, colonials, a lot of builds that were coming in around the late 90s, early 2000s. That's where a lot of the development and growth was in both of these cities. Um, so you got a lot of different options, you know, from being close to downtown, you got condos, you got single family homes, you got lake homes, you got homes on acreage, you got farms. I mean, you name it, there is tons of options in both cities, but the price of these homes in each of these cities is gonna vary greatly, you know, from city to city and subdivision to subdivision. And there's a big difference on why that is in the next category, so stick around. But, you know, on average, if you're looking for a home in Brighton, it's gonna run you right around $525,000. That's for a four bedroom, three bath, right around 2,500 square feet. And the condos range greatly. You got anything from a $150,000 condo up to a million dollar condo if you're in a subdivision like Hidden Lake. Now, Howell, on the other hand, doesn't have a whole lot of those type of options, you know, when it comes to it. The condo developments there are pretty, even keel across the board. You're gonna find anywhere from a detached condo, you can find um, you know, a, a condo, a ranch style condo, or a two-story condo. Um, those options do exist. They're gonna be right around the $250,000 mark you know, for a condo that's gonna get you a three bedroom, two bath, or a two bedroom, two bath in Howell. And the average cost of a home is gonna run you right around 410,000. And that's also for a four bedroom, three bath, right around 2,500 square feet. Now, again, ranges greatly you can find properties on 10 acres that you know have five bedrooms uh five bathrooms you know three thousand square feet you got a basketball court in the backyard you got a swimming pool all these options do exist you know it just depends on what type of lifestyle you're going for and hopefully that gives you a good idea of the price range in both these cities so you know just to recap on the real estate side you know how is going to be a little bit cheaper when it comes to real estate and that's going to get you to the tune of 13 to 20 percent cheaper than brighton uh, really just depending on the type of home that you're going for. And ultimately the reason why this is, is because of the school systems. Now, that brings me to our last point on our list, which is the school systems, you know, in both Brighton and Howell. Now, if you're looking for a good school system, you know, according to niche.com and according to greatschools.com, you know, the schools in Brighton are ranked substantially higher than Howell. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with Howell schools. I've heard great things about Howell, but if we're going off of the national statistics and going off of greatschools.org. So these rankings are higher for Brighton. So I'm just going to read some of these stats that we pulled. You know, now school rankings for Brighton, the elementary schools range anywhere from a six out of 10 to a 10 out of 10 for some of the elementary schools. Now the middle school got a six out of 10 here in Brighton and the high school got an eight out of 10 compared to Howell, which the elementary schools range from a five out of 10 to a seven out of 10. And the middle school got a six out of 10, which is on par with Brighton. But the high school, this was the major difference. It got a five out of 10. So compared to Brighton, which got an eight out of 10, Howell is three points below on the high school rating. So just something to consider, you know, when looking at school systems and looking at the overall, you know, location um, that goes into real estate values, you know, that goes into reselling your home. Is it more desirable for somebody moving to Howell to Brighton and vice versa? 
So all things to consider. And naturally, if we get asked the same question over and over again, we're gonna make a video about it. So this is that video. Hopefully this helps shine some light on exactly what city might be a better lifestyle or better fit for what you're going for. You know, real estate and how it can be a little bit cheaper, but also have to consider the schools. You know, the downtown areas are very similar. Proximity, you know, two things are, are kind of the same, but if you're on the Lansing side, you know, Howell and that side of the, the city might be a little bit closer to commutes to Lansing. I know they got the GM facility over there, a lot more going on on that side. And then if you're looking to be, you know, in Brighton or you're working in Ann Arbor or working in Detroit or maybe in uh, in uh, Novi area, Farmington Hills for the automotive industry, you know, these areas tend to be a little bit more centrally located. Um, one of the things that I forgot, which Brighton is right on the 96 and 23 interchange. So if you're looking to get east, west, north, south, Brighton is that really central hub there that you can get to, you know, Ann Arbor, Detroit, you can head up to, to Fenton or, or Flint, um, going north, or you can head over west to Lansing or Howell or Fowlerville, um, you know, from the interchange there. So that's a really good convenience and bonus because I know you guys love Casco, there is a Casco in Brighton. So maybe that just tilted the cap towards Brighton for you guys on making your decision, whether it's Howell or Brighton, but there is a Casco here in Brighton and uh, that's a big bonus. So I know that's important to a lot of people when looking at shopping. So if you got any value out of this video, please smash that subscribe button, tap that little bell so you're the first to learn about the current market here in Michigan and every time we put out a new video. And if you want more information just like this, you can go check out those other videos on our channel and we'll catch you on the next one. Peace.